today is the 22nd of March 2018 and the tunnel chimney behind me just there is about to be blown up at 10 o'clock we've got about half an hour to go um, so it's very exciting so this is on the River Medway and this is the Who St Werberg chimney just there we've been able to see that from our house ever since we've lived here so it's actually going to be quite sad because um, at night it all illuminates as well so it's quite a landmark for us it's actually pretty cold being March in England. <laughs> We're on Steve's boat today with the crew. We have sailed down here, but I ended up helping make bacon sandwiches for seven cups of tea and coffee. So we've got Richard and Richard and Jack and obviously Ian, and then there's Steve and Pete down below at the moment. <laughs> so, quite a few boats that have actually been left in the water have anchored up. We're probably in the exclusion zone at the moment, who knows? <laughs> we're trying to find a boat we're going to go alongside rather than drop our hook. Got a pretty good view though, haven't we? This man here. Oh, thanks. Do that. Wash Steve the galley, galley slave. Yeah, I'll help. Galley I didn't even tell you you were doing No, it's it. alright. It's not a woman's job. They began building Kings North Power Station in 1963. It was constructed on the site of an old World War I airship base, and it would take 10 years to be finished, so it wasn't actually commissioned until 1973. Now, I'm not sure if it was unusual or not, but it was actually a dual fired power station capable of running on either coal or oil, which I guess, when you think of the early 70s in this country, was quite handy. We'd only really just found North Sea oil, and in the not too distant future, we'd have all the problems with the miner strikes and so forth. So I guess it was quite useful being able to choose the fuel they wanted, but I think we all know it as a coal-fired power station. I think it was also fairly unusual in that it got its fuel by the sea. Being on our river, they could just ship everything in from wherever they wanted it. Now this chimney is 650 feet high, that's nearly 200 metres, and it had four 23 foot flues running through it. So you can clearly see here on a picture that was taken while it was being constructed. As you can imagine, it makes quite an impression on the local landscape, and it will be missed when it's gone. There's a sort of a well-known local story about Grain Power Station that had its chimney demolished just a couple of years ago. Apparently, as the story goes, one of the big vessels that enters the Thames called up the river authorities to check where it was. It thought it knew where it was, but couldn't see the giant chimney that it always used as a point of reference, so just wanted to make sure. Not sure that any of the ships on the Medway are going to miss King's North Power Station in the same way but it does go to show how much of an impact these chimneys have on the local landscape. Here's some aerial footage taken by a drone from the YouTube channel Jericho Long. I've just got low resolution images here. If you go to their channel, you can see it all in high definition. 
to get a much clearer view of how it came down. Something, wasn't it? Yeah, the boom. <laughs> 